Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got a quick 10 minute foot and ankle mobility routine for you guys. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get much better than that. So go ahead and jump on it. Ready? Let's get into this one. All right guys, today's video is a quick 10 minute ankle mobility routine, which if you're looking to improve your squats, improve your overall connection to the floor, or just improve your running, any of those things, if you have knee pain, back pain, this is one of the main areas we need to be looking at, the ankle. And realistically, in a lot of people, it's one of the most beat up, places that you could possibly begin with them. Our shoes that we're wearing have constantly put our feet into a shape that they're not meant to be in. And a lot of us have done some damage with narrows, toes, and high heels, all those things. So those are all issues that really have caused problems that we're seeing a lot of um, trick from into knee and back pains and other things like that, limited squat mobility. These are all things that stem from your foot and ankle. So I can't stress the importance of a session like this enough. Now, today we're gonna to be spending about a minute to two minutes in each position here and just covering the general ground range of motion of the foot and ankle overall, making sure that we have that to the most of our ability there. And that is gonna be the main goal in restoring ankle plantar flexion, ankle dorsiflexion, inversion, eversion, and the toe range of motion that we do have splay and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna be hitting all those things today in this session. Ready? All you need is a mat and we're gonna be good to go from there. Let's get into it. All right guys, we're gonna be spending about one to two minutes in each position, most of them in one minute range. Starting in a 90-90 position here at the hips, we're gonna interlace the fingers of the opposite hand to the foot. And we're gonna pry the foot into a supinated position. So I'm trying to get the top of my foot to the mat here. And you'll see me kind of go deeper into the toes each time and set that leg and rotate it back in. Now I do have one hand on my knee helping open up that leg. We're going the whole chain of the leg here to open up that hip. And if you wanna take this deeper, you can keep the fingers interlaced and actually lay on top of that leg. Now if you can't get into this 90-90 sit to begin with, you can straighten that back leg out to the front into a hurdler stretch as well and still interlace those fingers and open up that knee. So that's another alternative if this position is too much right now. Keep holding, breathing through the nose. All we wanna do here is focus on our nasal breathing diaphragmatically, so nice deep breaths in the nose, controlling the exhale and getting relaxed as much as possible. Go ahead and switch sides here. Once again, interlacing those fingers with the opposite foot, prying that foot into the supinated position, opening up that leg all the way down. Now just take it where you can right now. Don't worry about how far you can actually get into that pry. It might be a little bit limited at first, but it should grow as you do this more regularly. Very good. Next, we're gonna take our toes and tuck them under in extension here as we sit our butt to our heels and then elevate the hips. So you'll see I'm placing my hands back behind me. I wanna play with how much my toes are able to extend here. Now toe extension is extremely important. When we lack toe extension, that's when we start to see bunions start to form and it changes our overall gait and mechanics of our legs. So we really gotta maintain that toe extension as much as we're able to. 
So you'll see me even adjust my small toes here a little bit occasionally and see if I can get deeper into that extension, sitting my butt closer and closer to the floor between my heels. We're also looking at our knee flexion and hip internal rotation a little bit here. So that combination of all three down the chain is huge to our overall health of our leg, our knee, our foot, and our ankle. Very good, next we're gonna take those feet into full plantar flexion here. So my flat ankle is touching the mat all the way, still looking at deep flexion of the knee. My butt is going to the floor between my feet there. Again, hip internal rotation. And I'm gonna elevate again, raising up so I get a good stretch through those quadriceps and allowing myself to release after flexing those glutes a few times here, getting those arms behind me to support. This is all about the stretch that we're getting there and the activation of the glutes and putting extra pressure on those plantar flexed ankles as we elevate in the hip position as well. Now, if you have trouble in this position, you can always start with a pillow between your heels and your butt. So if you need to do that, you can add a pillow between there to help support yourself if it's not quite to the point where you can get all the way to the floor. And don't worry if you're not there yet. Again, it's a thing of time. Next, we're going to come to a half kneeling position and I want to drive my knee over my toes with three points of contact for my foot. The first metatarsal, the fifth metatarsal, and the heel. So I should have all three points of contact here. You're going to see me kind of gripping at the top of the foot there, helping keep my first metatarsal down as I drive the knee forward. And I want to try and maintain the active arch of my foot as much as possible here in this position. Now, as I drive that knee forward, I want my heel to stay down. That is the challenge. How far forward can I go without that heel raising up? It does help to have some extra weight on this one, so I'm trying to really put all my weight over that knee as I drive it forward. If you feel any points of impingement at the front of that ankle, like you're getting blocked by the structure of your ankle itself, it can help to actually push those points back toward your heel. So you can actually apply some pressure there at the front of the ankle to help release that a little bit. Now, we're gonna drop down to the forearm here, so I'm still gripping my foot to hold that foot to the ground, the first metatarsal pressed in. And now I'm working the hip through external rotation in this position as well. So I'm pushing the knee open, rotating toward that leg, but keeping my leg and foot and ankle in a pronated position here. This is really helpful for your squats and your lunges overall. and switching sides. So once again, we're gonna start with just a knee drive forward. I have three points of contact at our foot again. So first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal heel, and then putting pressure on that knee, keeping the heel down, maintaining the arch of the foot. Now, ideally, my knee should be about five inches over my toes. That's about what we want. About five inches over the toes is an ideal depth for that ankle dorsiflexion here. And that is a huge thing for our squats when we're getting into the depth of a squat, we need that ankle dorsiflexion. So this is your squat exercise right here, people. Again, dropping to that forearm, cupping the hand over the foot, so we're pushing the first metatarsal and helping keep that to the ground. And then externally rotating the hip by pushing the knee open and rotating my chest toward that leg there as much as possible. Going in and out of flexion at the knee there and extension of it a little bit and playing with that dorsiflexion as we have external rotation as well.
All right, and the last thing we're gonna do here is finish on some deep squat holds here. So again, still working that ankle dorsiflexion, but what you're gonna see me do is shift my weight side to side a little bit, and that's what you wanna play with. So my feet are about hips distance apart, maybe slightly narrower than that. Three points of contact on each foot again, first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal heel. That's important, that's why I keep repeating it. And you'll see me shifting weight, almost as if I was about to try and do a pistol squat and take one leg out of it. So just kind of shift side to side, try and keep your contact of your foot. So you're gonna play with ankle pronation and supination a little bit here as you rock side to side. And that's a challenge in itself. If you need to, hold on to something to help keep your balance in this position, that's okay. Lastly, we're gonna really challenge that ankle mobility, especially that pronation, by putting our feet together, going narrow, and rocking back and forth. So start in a rounded position here, going full flexion out front, and then we're gonna bring it back vertical. And once you kind of have that balance, again, if you need to hold on to something, you hold on to something. But once you have that balance, we're gonna rock forward and back just little bits. So you, it's hard to see in this angle. I didn't get all the camera footage I was hoping to with my other camera. The battery did die on me. But I am moving forward and backward, almost as if I'm trying to sit my butt to the floor. And you can see it getting bigger and bigger now as I've started to get into it more. So that range of motion you can play with, keeping your connection to the ground, making sure you don't fall over. And if you do, just laugh it off. All right, and there you guys have it. 10 minutes, quick and easy, no equipment necessary. You could do it at night while you're watching TV or right before bed. It is worth spending a little bit of time on your feet every day because they are constantly in footwear that is not supporting that. If you guys like this workout, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend who you know needs a little bit of work on their foot and ankle mobility as well. And if you guys have any questions, be for sure to drop those down below in the comments there for me. I will get those answered for you or simply say hi and that you enjoyed it. I would love to hear from you guys either way. So put some stuff down there for me and let me know what you're thinking, what's on your mind, or if you have questions and I will get those taken care of. If you guys are here looking to improve your overall mobility, make sure you take advantage of my seven day mobility training challenge. That's down below in the description here. It is seven days pre-programmed out mobility that takes a litmus test for you from head to toe of where you're missing range of motion, where you're missing flexibility, and where you're lacking the motor control and patterning that you need to get to those positions. So it is a great test to start to identify those things that are causing you aches and pains from training or even causing injuries overall. Um, it can show you those root issues and where we need to show some improvement in order to, to take the steps in the right direction where you don't have those issues anymore. That is down in the description. It's completely free. You can sign up and get started today. Lastly, I'll also put my favorite minimalist shoe brands link down below in the description so you guys can shop if you do want to make that transition from regular footwear to minimalist footwear, which will overall benefit you whether you're a lifter, a runner, or just an everyday athlete trying to stay physically active without pain in the knees and hips and low back and that kind of stuff. So it's worth shopping, making that transition. It does take time to go from a regular shoe to a minimalist shoe, but it is a transition that is well worth it. Last but not least, if you guys have not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. Catch you guys next week.